I want to ask you, you mentioned the opioid crisis. You're, you're co-chair of the Military Mental Health Caucus. You're co-chair of the Addiction Treatment and Recovery Caucus. The, the opioid yeah. crisis, which you mentioned, has just, it's torn your state apart. And the president, at a recent opioid crisis event, uh, which was last week, touted a new drug and its use among veterans. This is a ketamine-like nasal spray, which has shown some promise yeah. when it comes to treating depression that's resistant to other drugs. It also, though, appears, and this was discovered pretty recently, to work similarly to an opioid. Let's listen to what the president said. I think it's made by Johnson & Johnson. But it's a suicide. It's if you're depressed. Yes. You take it. It's an inhaler, and it almost immediately cures depression, at least for a little while. And I said, order, corner the market on it, and give it to anybody that has the problem, because you have people calling, and our our folks do a great job on the phone, but it's a telephone. You have people calling looking for help, and if those people had that. I'm, I'm hearing like instantaneously they're in much better shape. I, I wonder, as someone who is involved in combating the opioid crisis as well as trying to combat veteran suicide, do you have any concerns here? Well, I have, I have a concern when the, the president says things like, I think it's Johnson & Johnson, when he knows damn well it's Johnson & Johnson, and he knows that it's his friends at Marlago who are, are making the deal uh, with him and the VA on all of this, and it's not going through the proper protocols. I mean, it's abhorrent that we lose 22 vets a day to suicide, and we all need to be figuring out how to, how to fix that, both from the pharmacological end and alternative treatments. But to have the president fast track something that his buddies are involved in with a deal with Johnson and Johnson, and we don't know that all the protocols haven't been done, which means we don't know what the side effects are on this, I think is, is reckless. Again, it's a pattern of behavior. And we just had an event here in Youngstown just a couple days ago with a double amputee vet who was teaching yoga classes to other vets. And healing them from their post-traumatic stress with yoga, with meditation, uh, with you know, transcendental meditation that the David Lynch Foundation is doing so much good work, healing vets with these treatments that actually get them off of their drugs, which is what we want. We know vets who have gone from taking 20 drugs down to two or three and saving the VA a lot of money, getting their life back. Let's explore these treatments that get them off of the drugs. And look, if this works, I'll be all for it because it's about saving lives. But let's not fast track something where Trump's got a backroom deal with somebody that we don't know anything about and we're gonna skip over these protocols. You know, who knows, some of these drugs, you don't know what the side effects are. Some of the side effects could make things worse, but we won't know because we didn't go through the proper protocol. So I think we've gotta be very, very careful as we try to address it, but knowing that there already are real solutions out there that vets who have had post-traumatic stress will tell you all about things like I mentioned uh, around these uh, integrative health approaches. Uh, I know that you blame the president for pulling out of the accord with Iran as precipitating this showdown. As you're running for president, how are you thinking about this? If you inherited this, how would you handle it? Well, you got to be engaged, completely engaged, moment to moment. I think if you read history, you see whether it was Roosevelt or Kennedy during the Cuban Missile Crisis or any other significant uh, time, the president of the United States has got to be engaged. And you've got to be surrounded with people who I think don't have an agenda. And that's why I worry about uh, John Bolton. I think he has an agenda. He wants regime change in Iran. He's wanted it for a long time. And that starts to cloud your judgment. So as president, you got to make sure you got people giving you good advice, not, not an ax to grind that may steer you in a direction you don't want to be in. Do you feel that the president is using restraint, as some Republicans have said? Well, you know, he's, he's a distractor in chief. I mean, his whole goal, with regardless of what the issue is, is how do I get the American people distracted from the economy, distracted from the, the fact that they're living paycheck to paycheck, and all the promises he made during the campaign, he has not fulfilled, especially in places like Ohio and Pennsylvania and Michigan and Wisconsin, that he states he has to win. And so he uses these opportunities to uh, take all the oxygen out of the room on any other issue. And so I worry that that's his goal. His goal isn't to solve the problem, but his goal is to be in the news, regardless of what the issue is. And now here we are with Iran. Uh, that could spin out of control very, very quickly. 
and he's in it for all the wrong reasons. That's what I worry about more than anything. Your Republican colleague in the Senate, Tom Cotton from Arkansas, says the U.S. needs to immediately launch a retaliatory strike against Iran. What's your reaction to that? I, I just think that is so irresponsible, quite frankly. Uh, w with all due respect, I mean, to talk about launching missiles and escalating tensions uh, uh, right out of the gate, we don't even have all the facts yet. Let's be honest. We don't have the information we need to start lobbing bombs. And if we're going to have that kind of reactionary leadership, this country is, is going to go down the tubes because we can't afford it. We've got a trillion dollar deficit, annual deficit, trillion dollars, $22 trillion debt. We got Russia, we got China breathing down our necks. We got the highest income inequality we've had since the Great Depression. And now we're going to get into a war with Iran in the Middle East? I mean, are you freaking kidding me? That's, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. And we need statesmen today. We don't need reactionaries. We need statesmen to, to put this stuff at ease. We should re-engage Iran. We should get back into the Iran deal that we had with them and the rest of the world was in agreement and, and stop this nonsense of how can we get on TV? How can we start beating the war drums? This is not what we need right now. We need a, a president that's focused on making peace, being strong, but making peace, and then focus on getting the middle class rebuilt in the United States. I, I want to talk to you about impeachment proceedings because you have just recently started calling for them to begin against President Trump. Speaker Pelosi is still resisting the calls from Democrats like yourself. Uh, is she going to have to budge on this, do you think? She's juggling a caucus that's divided. And, and so, you know, I personally think that, that the president has committed crimes, and I don't think he's above the law. If someone in Youngstown, Ohio, uh, that works at the auto plant or did work at the auto plant, did what the president did, that person would be indicted. And, and so we can't have a king, we have a president. And so that, that's why the pressure is mounting. And she's got to juggle the interests of the caucus. And it's not easy because there are people in our caucus who don't want to go down the road of impeachment. And that, that makes it difficult for her as leader. Uh, but you know, we're saying that we think we need to do this and we'll see where the cards uh, fall.